This here's a money maker. Money maker for the farmer because it's a simple tractor that barely lets them down. Money maker for the mechanic because they're easy to fix. You can split this thing in 15 minutes. But it'll take you like 45 minutes to put the stupid hood back on again. Here we go. So, why are we taking the hood off? And why is there a pair of ice grips holding this line on? Well, shit happens. Um, this little line is the plastic line that tells you that there's oil pressure. That gauge. But, when you're looking behind you and you're not paying attention to this gauge or all the oil running out of this line, you run out of oil. So this one needs an engine job. So um, I say they're easy to work on, except kind of the engine. A couple things, the hood is a pain in the ass and they put the fuel tank over top of the valve cover. So I gotta do that. Then the oil pan is actually structural. So I gotta crack the bolts loose on the front and then take these bolts off underneath here for the oil pan and then just kinda tilt the engine forward and drop the pan. We gotta take a look at the pan and we gotta pull a couple bearings to make sure that the crankshaft's okay. If the crank is not okay, it's a full engine job. I gotta take the front half right, or I gotta take the rad and everything off and then I have to take the block out and uh, to remove the crankshaft. If the crank is okay, we can do an in-frame, which is hopefully what we're going to do. So basically just pull the hood off, pull the head off, pull the oil pan off, put in some new liners and pistons, uh, some new bearings front to back, and away we go, hoping that the, yeah, it's not the rear main seal. Everything else is leaking, but the rear main seal is okay. Here we go. I thought it'd be nice and fill it right. Oh, you can see that? It's right full. It's fantastic. And then I thought they'd be smart and not put a tap on it either. Ah. Usually they have a tap here. Usually. But this is me. So there's no tap. Anyway, we're gonna wash it off um, so that we can keep it nice and clean and then take the tank off, but I'll probably wash it. It's already late, let it dry overnight. I got a nice clean engine in the morning. Here we go. This assembly is pretty straightforward. Uh, make sure to keep track of all your bolts. These are fine thread bolts, so it's kind of a pain groove finding new ones to the right length if you happen to misplace one. As much as you try, the coolant never goes where you want it to go. I think it wants to go on the floor. Uh, make sure it's nice and clean, start with the valve cover, pull off your valve train, taking it off nice and even, or you can back the rockers off if you feel the need to, I've never had an issue. Crack all the bolts loose on the head, starting from the outside, working your way in. The outside two are studs, and if the head hasn't been off in a long time, you can really fight those studs. So sometimes I just to see how much of a pain it's going to be, and then just weld the nut to the stud and pull the stud out with it. Uh, I got lucky on this one, one was free and one wasn't. So pull that out, um, you can buy a new stud and uh, nut when you order your parts. Pulling the oil pan is pretty straightforward, there's two, two hidden bolts kind of in the back of the oil pan there. I crack the frame loose and just spread it out a little bit, it drops nice and easy then. And then you've got access to some pistons and connecting rods. Here we go, let's take a look. Alright, so it still ran okay but you can just see some pieces right here so he's just i think he caught it maybe Ooh, not good see that hopefully that's just bearing we never like seeing seeing chunks like that not good even though it still sounded okay when it was cold i drove it in um he drove it off the trailer it sounded okay so i drove it in but uh not good hopefully we caught it in time i think this one has a balancer on it uh, we'll take that balancer off and then take a look. So, here we go. Alright, let's see. Cross your fingers. Ooh, that doesn't look good. It's always the back one that's the issue. Come on, crankshaft, be okay. 
like it just spun the bearing a little bit. Let me see. Uh, crankshaft is screwed. We're looking at pulling the entire block and that crank needs to be done. Ouch. Just got a whole lot bigger. There we go. All right, just got done talking with the customer and discussing on how many thousands you put into a $3,000 tractor. These tractors you can pick up at auctions anywhere. But do you really know what you're getting? No. You could have an engine blow up on the way home from the auction because you don't know the history. You don't know unless it's your neighbor that's retiring and, and whatever. We are going to fix this tractor. Um, mainly because he just put a new tire on it. Look at that. Look at that awesomeness. What do you do with a brand new tire? Well, you put a brand new engine in front of it. So we're going to yank this engine. Uh, we're going to redo the rad because it's clogged, the oil cooler in the front, take care of all that, replace some hoses and liners, pistons, rings, bearings, and get the crank machined. So um, now comes the question, do we pull the front half away and then pull on the engine? Do we support the engine underneath and roll it ahead and then split the engine from there? Or do we put the cherry picker over top and hang it from there and then pull the engine and I don't think it really matters, but I think what I'm going to do is pick the engine up with a cherry picker under the front, roll it ahead, and then somehow support that, put the engine on the bench, and then the cherry picker's in the way. Oh, I maybe grab with the forklift then. So many, so many questions. What are we going to do? We're going to tear into it. That's enough talking. Let's do it. Okay, you got your power steering lines on the other side, pull your starter off so you can get this bolt out. Uh, bolts along the sides, there's three along the top here. Your fuel linkages, so your shut off and your throttle, and then your speedo on the other side. Take your wiring off, you don't really have to label it, it only goes in one spot. Support the back, support the front, and chalk your axle tip. Otherwise you get a nice surprise when you start rolling it apart. And then, roll it apart. So it was a good time to look at the clutch and order a new one. Take it off evenly. Actually, that looks really good. Um, far from hitting the rivets. I don't think I'm gonna worry about it, actually. The other one's PTO. It looks good. Take the flywheel off, I guess. The crank's got to come out, so might as well do that. So we'll fold these tabs over, grab a little bit bigger gun. So the engine's out. And I can't believe I already pressure washed it because it's gross. I need to pressure wash it again. And we're gonna make sure that nothing gets into the hydraulic lines. We're gonna pull the rest of the pistons and then we can pull the crankshaft out. Crankshaft is gonna go out to my machine shop right away to get machined. We're gonna probably, we're gonna have to take at least 10 thou off. Um, and then we're gonna send him the head right away too. I'm not gonna to touch the head, we'll strip the head but then we'll start pulling our dry sleeve. So these are sleeve liners. So basically there's a, there's, a, there's a puller to pull the sleeves out. We put a brand new sleeve in again. It is like a brand new engine. So um, it's getting late again already. I'm gonna pressure wash it in front of the door. It'll be nice and dry in the morning. And then we can uh, keep going with the disassembly. So here we go. 